You put a Queensland jersey on Dan Gagai and he finds a way to score a try. Cam Munster, he's going to be the one to watch. The hammer! He deserves a try! He didn't know that he's young, such a big name, such a promising star. Well, we've seen plenty of this in Oregon. This is one of the best. Patani will score! And Queensland celebrates! And he smashed. That's a brilliant rugby league try. Chip and Chase in there, no, yeah. something different, mix it up. Pride is a wonderful thing for a footballer. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Queenslander, where we're still digesting our origin success. We can do it for months and months on end, boys, because you're only as good as your last game, surely. How did Correct. you guys uh, see game three? I really enjoyed it, actually. Yeah, I got the chance opportunity to sit on the sideline uh, next to uh, Lockie, uh, which was great. I had Wally Lewis one side, uh, I had Lockie down there, Cam Smith as well, and I was trying to stay contained as much as possible on the sideline because, you know, when you've got the Channel 9 cap on, you have to be impartial as much as you can. But when I saw Wally jumping up and down and cheering, uh, I was like, oh, I don't care anymore. But uh, it was fantastic. It was it was a, a great way for Queensland to finish the series, especially after the first two games. And um, there's a, a lot of great things there that we can take into next year as well. Yeah, it was a good way to finish the series. Um, you know, obviously going into the game, there's a lot of pressure on players, a lot of pressure on the coaches. Um, so it relieves that pressure. And I think, uh, I guess, two things that were, I guess, really sort of um, obvious was obviously Callum Ponga. Yep. Uh, and Ben Hunt at hooker was, was really good. Mm. Um, so you look at the spine, and we know that that's critical in big games. And you know the um, the, the Broncos, the Queensland team, had their best spine of the series. And look, I don't think it changes the results of game one and two. But it, we knew going into this game, with the outs for New South Wales and yep. the ins for us, it was going to be a closer contest. And they showed some grit, which was really really special. Um, did you have to wear gloves in your area <laughs> where you were? No, no, I was in the dirty zone. Oh, you so zone? Okay, yeah, right. you're in the clean zone. So All right, so yeah. You, you, yeah. you weren't part of the, the, the strangler, the Boston yeah. strangler club? No, no, no I wasn't. That's labelled by Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but boys, uh, 90 seconds to go. New South Wales down by two. They opt to take the penalty goal from halfway. If you guys, former captains yourself, what would you have done? Was that the right decision or wrong decision? I think it comes down to the kicker. If, if you're the captain and the kicker comes in and goes... I think I can do it, and you just got to back him. Uh, and and Latrell can kick that far, right? Yeah. So, um, and look, the, yeah, it, it might have been a different scenario if that was a decider. Yeah. yeah. If that was a decider, maybe you would de deliberate over that decision a bit more. But they'd won the series, and he had a crack, and you know, um, I, I back him for backing himself, but yeah. it didn't didn't happen. Because haven't they recently changed the rules where it does go into Golden Point now in State of Origin? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, to be honest, if Latrell kicks it, I'm sure that he's lining up in the extra time as well to kick the field goal. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, they, they had a crack. They, they wanted to take it into OT and, I don't know, maybe they, they should have went for a trial. Who knows? Um, I'm happy with the victory either maybe way. <laughs> should have toe-poked it. Toe yeah, poke, old school. Yeah. Mel, big Mel. Mel from halfway. <laughs> well, they said just a couple of weeks ago it's all doom and gloom for Queensland, but you look what uh, you said, Lockie, Caitlin Ponga, potentially Reese Walsh in the future, maybe Sam Walker, uh, the Hammer, killed it on debut, scored a try, Harry Grant. It's, it's pretty exciting for Queensland moving forward if you think about it like that. Yeah, again, the, the spine's pretty critical to big games and I think there's some good signs there for us, uh, but equally on the other side... You know, Nathan Cleary, Jerome yeah. Luai, Tedesco's 28, Cook's 30. So you got, I guess, you know, two of those guys. And, you know, DCE's, I guess, getting towards the back of his, back of his career as well. So uh, while we've got some good kids coming through in key positions, um, you know, they, they've still got, you know, some quality players in those key positions for a few years yet. Yeah, and, and their, their positions and their guys that have had experience now, you know, if we're bringing some of these younger guys in, it's, yeah. you know, it's their first series, it's their first game. Uh, it's going to be, you know, hard to try to transition and, and get into and establish themselves as state of origin players. And I, I look at the forward pack and I think we've got some good young forwards there as well that we can build on and build around going forward in the future. You know, uh, big Tino Fasal Malawi's only young. Day for feet is only young. My photo Aker was huge. Mo was really good. good. I thought Mo was great in the first game. He came in off the bench after uh, Christian Welsh got uh, the HIA, um, and 
I thought he was really good. I thought he had a fantastic series. So, you know, he's one to um, put in the team. You bring Jai Arrow back in the team yep. as well. Um, someone that didn't play this year as well, Lindsay Collins, I thought was really good in last year's series. So we've got some good forwards there. We've got some good players that if we can st stick together, and, and I think the, the less unsettled we can be with this team, I think the better we can be. You look at New South Wales, um, Freddie's been around for a while now. He's had a core group of those guys that have played in that New South Wales team that have been around for a while and, and look at the success they're bringing. So we need to kind of uh, maybe bring back the old pick and stick and uh, let's stick with some of these guys and grow and develop and, and see what we can do in the future. I think where we are, we, we, we were sort of lacking depth this year with our outside backs, you know. Yeah. We, you know. We were sort of reluctant to put Kurt Capewell in the centres, but we felt he was the best man to do a job on turbo. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think while we've got some depth in some positions, like yeah. there's a lot of forwards out there, there's some young prospects coming through in those key positions, but outside backs, you know, I think we're, we need to sort of start, you know, not seeing, but we need to start developing more there. Mm. Bring GI back from England and start climbing him. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what we need, a big, powerful centre like you. Yeah, yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> Yep, and make sure they're born in Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> what about the, the coach, Paul Green? Does, does that save him? Do you bring him back next year based on the quality you saw in Game 3? Yeah, well, yeah. look, I, I think... Look, he said after the game was a massive relief. You know, a lot of pressure comes with origin and you throw in the COVID bubble, that just, you know, accentuates things. So, um, yeah, look, it was a tough series for him. Um, to finish on that note and show, look, you don't you don't play with that character unless you're playing for your coach in that game three. So yeah. that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think um, after game one and game two, they uh, uh, they definitely improved from game one uh, into game two, and then uh, again into game three. And uh, I think we should let Granny let his contract run out and and see where he is at the end of his contract. And, you know, I, I feel for him a, a bit. <laughs> You know, we're we're quick to judge and we're quick to point fingers because you know we have had so much so much success within this uh, this Queensland realm that you know we expect success as well. And uh, you know, Granny's come into uh, a tough environment as a coach, and uh, it's a it's the toughest arena, uh, and there's high expectations as well. But uh, I think uh, the win. Uh, reliefs that uh, yeah. that pressure valve just a little bit, and uh, I think uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, where he goes and what he does next year. And, and look, we've already discussed it, but I think if you just look, and I'm not saying it changes the result of the series. I think New South New South Wales still win, but you know, in game one, game two, they had their first four picks for their spine players. Yeah. Um, we didn't really get that until game three. Yeah. Uh, so that. That makes a big difference. And still no Harry Grant, who probably would yeah. have improved the side a couple more percentage points. Speaking of contract talk, we'll move to Clubland. Anthony Milford, there was talk linked to Parramatta. Brad Arthur kind of ruled that out. But would he be a good addition to a top four side in the lead-up to finals, maybe as like a, a super sub? Yeah, look, he hasn't... I mean, he, he would take a couple of weeks to get back into the groove. He hasn't played a lot of first grade this year. and um, So, but... You know, like he's he's a player. He's a talented player, and we've yeah. we've seen what he's capable of. Um, going to a club where a coach is confident they can get the best out of him, then it makes sense because you're not, you know, you're going to be paying, you know, um, you're going to be getting him cheap, cheap compared yeah. to what he is now. Yeah. And, and to finish off a season for a team as well as a super sub, as a number 14, it's limited minutes. It's right, we need you to get on there and uh, and and. Uh, you know, come up with some big plays or, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of clubs out there that do it and do it well. And I think the Melbourne Storm do it really well when Harry Grant starts and you've got um, Brendan Smith who comes off the bench as that number 14. Parramatta already have a super sub at the moment with Will Smith who yeah, kind of... Good. He comes on and he's a bit of a cover all. And, 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 and Mills the same too, you know. He, he's a big enough frame that he can play that lock kind of role. He can cover your halves if need be. He can come on and play dummy half If he played well. lock, Sammy, where would you defend him? You'd hide him. <laughs> you, you would, and Next that's what you'd, good that's what you'd have to do. You, you would have to hide him, and, and that's the beauty of some of those teams as well. Is they have some big forwards who can, you know, yeah. uh, kind of kind of protect him to somewhat. So yeah. Look, I, I yeah, I think you'll find a home, and I hope he does because he, he is a good good person, uh, and he is a talent. Um, it's, I guess it's just one of those things where a club and a and a player have just 
I guess you know the relationship's broken down, and, and it's probably best for for both parties to have a have a fresh start. Yeah, and it's it's all about the journey, and and he's come to the end of his journey at the Broncos, uh, and it doesn't mean his journey's over. I, I'm I'm sure Milf's got a lot of great footy in him going forward, and um, you know uh, a new start somewhere else might be fantastic for him. And how do you think his time will be remembered at the Broncos? You look back in ten years' time, what do you think of Anthony Milford? at the Broncos, because he was so close to being a lifelong hero in that grand final in 2015. He was probably man of the match. If you go back unbiased and watch that game, he's probably the best player on the field, but they just lose, and his life changed. Yeah, I think I think that's that one memory, you will always remember that as probably where he was at his peak at the club. And then, you know, I guess a lot of people, and this is the problem that comes with, you know, big money deals. It comes with a lot of expectation, a lot yeah. of pressure. and. You know, in the end, he hasn't been able to live up to that that expectation, and that's just reality. Uh, so, but I, I don't. It doesn't take away his talent. He's got that's that's still there. Yeah. Um, so, from my perspective, like he had a some a couple of the couple of years there under Wayne, where he was unbelievable to watch yeah. and entertaining to watch. But you know, for the last few years, for whatever reason. The, you know, just haven't been able to unlock that 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 talent. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny when you leave a club or if you retire or anything like that. They they usually put your highlights to a song, yeah. uh, and mine was a pretty short song. Uh, <laughs> but Milf is at least you know his highlights at the Broncos are at least a two song highlight reel, <laughs> yeah. uh, to be honest, because he's got a lot of great highlights at the club. Yeah, there was a, a lot of low times, and a lot of that was uh, you know outside pressure. A lot of it was pressure on himself as well to uh, to perform. So. Um, I think he'll be, well, I hope he's remembered for all the fantastic things he's done for our club, both on and off the field too, because I know he's, uh, he does a lot of hard work uh, within the community and in and around Brisbane as well uh, through all the Broncos community programs. Yeah, I think it's important that, you know, you've got to acknowledge what he's done for the club and make sure that, you know, you, um, he leaves on good terms because yeah. it's, not, it's not a bitter thing. It's just, you know, he's, he's in, in need of a fresh start. And if you're coaching him next year, where do you play him? Fullback, 5'8", or that 14 role off the bench, given you probably get him cheap? Uh, I think 5'8". I mean, yep. he's played his best football there. Um, you know, um, Siebes had a crack at fullback with him last year, and, you know, he played some great football at Canberra at fullback. But I just think, um, you know, that's, that's, that's a high-intensity um, position in our game, fullback. That's a lot of running. Yeah. It's a, the, the elite fitness levels. So I just think 5'8" is where he's played his best football. It's just about unlocking um, that talent. Yeah, I'd love to see him with a dominant half. Uh, yeah. If he has a dominant half around him that can run and control the game, where we'll see the best out of Melf, where you, know, you just give him the opportunities to run when he wants, to play eyes up footy. And uh, I think, um, like you like said, that 5'8 position is his position. And speaking of positional changes, the hammer went back to fullback for the Cowboys on the mm. weekend. Killed it, very exciting to watch. Do you think that's his future? That's his best position moving forward? Um, I, I guess I, I, my view has always been I, I like fullbacks that can pass and put their outside men into better positions, right, uh, and create space for them. So, uh, look, I, I think like his speed makes him effective at fullback. Mm. Uh, I just I think you know the, you know I think how long's Val signed for? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah. A long yeah. Time. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think you know Val is. You know he's a he's a good fullback at NRL level. Um, you because know his passing game is better. You think? Yeah, I yeah. think yeah. I, but you know Hammer played in the centres for Origin, did a great job. Uh, I, I think maybe that's where you you sort of persist with him. And Queensland needs centres. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Now I loved him at fullback. I thought he was fantastic. But I agree with Lockie as well. Yeah. Um, you know there's. Um, Having that speed, he just needs to start developing a pass. I think I think Kalen Ponga does it really well, where he can skip to an outside man and create his own two on th uh, three on two. Um, and I think you know going forward, if if the Cowboys are smart, they need to start putting these things in place now to to help Hammer develop that pass because um, one, he's a, he's a great feeling if Val's not playing or if Val's injured. But uh, you know you can you can make him even better and, and maybe you know push Val to a wing uh, eventually because I think. Val's a great winger as well, and uh, he can uh, definitely uh, be a great finisher out, outside a, a player like Hammer. So we're building the spine for the Cowboys. We've got Val at uh, fullback. Reese Robson's actually been excellent at hooker. He stays there next year, but you've got three halves. This is the eternal question for Cowboys fans. Uh, Dearden, Townsend, Drinkwater. You, you can only pick two. Who do you go with? Well, if, you can, if we talk about... We always talk about 
halves that complement each other. We talked about Milford being with a, a dominant half, general yeah. organiser. So if I'm working on that, and that's the way I like to work, I, I would say that at the moment it's Townsend Drinkwater and Dearden to still earn his... The young his, pup. Yeah, yeah, young pup yeah. earn his stripes. So it's been the conundrum ever since they signed Townsend and Dearden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you want to throw a hammer at fullback, well, the conundrum gets even yeah. worse. Well, and then they signed, well, they signed Drinkwater as well at the same time because there was talks of him leaving the yeah, Cowboys they as well. Him. Yeah, yeah. So I thought they were going to go with with Townsend One and, and, and Dearden together, yeah. playing in the halves, and yeah. then they end up uh, keeping Drinkwater. So um, I, I I agree with Lockie. I, I love Townsend and Drinkwater together. I think Drinkwater is a fantastic five eight, um, and, and, and Tommy's still earning his stripes as a, as a first grader. What I think Scott Drinkwater needs to do is read the rule book in the off-season with that double movement. That, <laughs> that was the worst double movement you've ever, ever seen. Uh, moving to, uh, south, down to the border, Gold Coast Titans uh, for Fida. Have you been disappointed with him? A lot of ups, a lot of downs overall. How do you assess his season so far? It's, oh, it's his biggest drama at the moment is his inconsistencies. Uh, and, um, you know, he, uh, again, he's another one of those... Uh, uh, big money players uh, who the, the Titans have really, really chased hard to make sure that they're a, that he's a part of their team down there. Um, but he does need to he needs to lift his game. Um, and, and if anything, he just needs to go back to some some simplistic things, um, work on his line running, work on his combination with his half. Um, you know, I think that's the one of the most important things you can do as an uh, as a wide running uh, back row is work on your combination with your halves because your halves will actually make you look better than you actually are yep. and he's a great player already which we know that but um, yeah it's it's something I really love to see him work on in these last few uh, weeks of the season and then you know really try and nail those things uh, throughout the, the off season and pre-season next year. I think when you have a really good young impact player like Dave is um, the ones that evolve into the really good players are the ones that get their head around doing the one percenters doing the little things well in their game and I think that's where I think that's where Dave's just letting himself down at the moment, you know, whether it's um, filling the space in defence, um, just having some, at times, I guess you would say lazy plays. Um, so it, it is, he, he's, that talent he's got and that damaging runs that he can do, that, they'll always be there. But if he gets better at doing the one percenters in his game, kick pressure, kick chase, you know, getting back behind the football early, all those little things that are not, it's a, I guess it's a, it's not a muscle memory thing, it's a, it's a, it's a work ethic thing, yeah. right? Um, well, he's got a guy there in Tino Fasul Malau who can actually help him with those things. Because if you watch, if you watch Big Tino, he will be. If there's a break made, he is chasing all the way back to the post. Um, you know, if there's a, a short side that needs to be filled up, State he's of the Origin first guy. was a perfect example. That sets up that try for the hammer because mm. he backed up Munster. Yeah, exactly. So, so he's got guys around him that can help him and teach him some of these skills he's just got to he's got to be willing and, and able to put his hand up and say I right, there are things in my game I need to fix yes I am talented yes I can do these big plays but it's about doing all those little plays yeah. you can do you can look fancy again day for feet up he's only young he's probably got a two song highlight reel already himself yeah. mm -hmm. but you know those little plays you know they're the guys that you wanted to play with your, your, your Dallas Johnsons the guys that always showed up in every little tackle um, those little one percenters that you don't get the accolades for if Dave starts bringing those things into his game it'll boost his confidence and it'll, it'll only make the Titans a better team well it life. makes him a complete player because yeah. um, he's got talent and if he's got the work ethic um, and the commitment there then you know he can earn that sort of money for the rest of his career yeah. but at the moment until he fixes up that stuff um, you know there's there's, there's going to be questions asked about him. Yeah. What are they missing, the Titans? Because it's so frustrating to watch because they have the talent. They're playing all their games at home for the rest of the season, essentially in South East Queensland. This is a massive opportunity. I see it as a massive failure if they don't make the finals this year. Yeah, uh, and, and I think we all probably sat here at the um, start of this show, at the start of this year, and, and we said that the Titans are probably one of those teams that we thought with their signings, off-field signings, that they were going to you know, be one of those top eight teams. So I think it, you know, and, and they'll probably mark themselves personally pretty hard on this as well. If they don't make the finals, of course they're going to be filthy with their with their efforts this year. And um, it's, I, I think their ability to attack is absolutely fantastic, but it's this days they have lapses in games where they have 
10, 20 points put on them really quickly. So that, yeah. And they think that they can score 20. And they can because they are uh, a freakish team like that. So I think for them it's more um, a defensive mindset. And if they've got their defence right, uh, their attack just flows so, so well. Yeah, I, I, you know, I look at teams that are inconsistent. Um, and it all, for me, it comes down to leadership. Um, I just think that's a key component to turning up every week. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's, that's an area where they need to strengthen um, because well, there might be players that have played a, lot of, a few games there, but at the same time, all the clubs I look at um, that are inconsistent, for me, it's just a reflection of their leadership. Yeah, and when you look at that team, and, and all reports out of the Titans are Big Tino is one of their leaders, and he's in his early 20s. Yeah. He leads with his actions and, and leads by his, his examples, but you know they, they need a... Um, they need a Fogarty to stand up. They need, you know, one Ash of the other. Well, Fogarty's now, in his what second year of NRL. You yeah. know, even though he's yeah. not young. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah, look. We could keep talking about it, but I, yeah. I just think that um, there's obviously something not there's something missing, and yeah. that that would be my take at the moment. Yeah. Well, boys, thanks for your time. Another big week for our Queensland NRL clubs. Of course, Friday night, massive game for the Cowboys. You'll see it live and free on Whitewater Sports. North Queensland up against the Storm, the unbeatable Melbourne Storm in Townsville. Thanks for your time.